guys, I'm struggling here. I'm really, really struggling with how to start this video. Uh, a lot of my recent reviews, I've done that, you know, who is this for? Who's asking for this? You know, all of that sort of thing. I don't want that to become the standard for my channel reviews. But how else do I start this video? <laughs> Google Stadia, who is this for? Let me just lay the groundwork a little here for you. I never pre-ordered this. The Google Stadia, yeah, I've been following the news and all that sort of stuff, but it just never interested me at all. It's not because, you know, of the online only components, the fact that there's features missing, all of that sort of stuff. It's because of its games. That's why I buy a new console. Um, and this one really doesn't have many exclusive games at all. In fact, it only has one. You see, I am a gamer at heart, and if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that you are too. But the term gamer is just so incredibly broad. All these games that you're seeing all over the screen right here, that's the sort of gamer that I am. It gives you an idea into the sort of games that I like to purchase for myself. And all of these particular types of games are not for me. Now, that's not saying they're bad. They're obviously incredibly popular for a reason. They're just not my type of games. So it gives you a bit more of an understanding as to why I wouldn't buy Stadia. Now some of those games may fall through the cracks onto my radar. It's happened before, I'm sure it'll happen again, but I'm never going to buy a new system or a console, whatever you want to call Stadia, to play these games that I would never normally play, <laughs> that I can already get on any of the consoles that I already own and PC. For me, a system, console, whatever, is only built up on these exclusive titles. That's where it gets its reputation in my eyes. And currently, Stadia only has one. So I went over to the Stadia store on my phone. Strangely, I couldn't do it in a browser or anything like that. And I picked up Guilt, the only exclusive game on Google Stadia. Is it any good? Well, let's review the only reason I would buy this new console. And if you guys just want to hear my thoughts on Stadia itself, then, you know, jump to the timestamp that you're seeing on the screen. But for right now, let's play the only exclusive title on Google Stadia. The reason that someone like me would actually fork out the money to get it. Emily just vanished one day. Most people lost hope. They just stopped looking. So that was the beginning of the trailer for the game Guilt. And everything you see from here on out was recorded via a Chrome browser with my Google Stadia controller connected to my PC via a typical USB lead. We'll get to the performance and how easy it was to set up in a little bit. But for now, let's just review this game. And in short, the game is perfectly fine i've completed it twice so far it's got multiple endings i've still got one to go which in all honesty i don't see myself doing anytime soon but honestly i had a perfectly average amount of fun with this game in the game you play as sally koofman a young girl who's looking for her missing cousin emily who's been missing for a few weeks now and that leads her onto a cable car to another dimension in search for emily she very quickly does indeed find her, although in very obvious video game logic fashion, as you would expect, she's always just out of reach. You know, she's at the top of that building. Oh, now she's trapped in that area or this area. Whenever you get close to her, it becomes apparent that Emily doesn't actually want you to find her and always shouts to leave her alone. She runs away and because you're, I don't know, stupid or kind, you decide you continue to chase after her. What's Emily's deal? What's this dimension all about? Well, we don't get all of the answers, but we get enough to complete a rather simple yet enjoyable story. As you can see, along your way, you're going to be coming up against these weird monster-looking things that at first are a little spooky as you're hiding around in the shadows, hoping not to get seen, ducking into air vents that are perfectly placed around the game. But after a short while, you realise that these things are pretty easy to just run past and eventually kill. Even when there are loads in an area, as long as you don't just stand in the middle of them, you can pretty much easily take out an entire room with ease, leaving you to explore freely and without ducking and hiding around in the shadows. Sally's weapons, so to speak, consist of a flashlight that very quickly turns into a beam of light that kills the majority of these standard enemies, as well as being used to solve certain puzzles along your way. And a little later on in the game, you get a mini fire extinguisher type thing, which can be used to freeze certain enemies for a 
short amount of time and again to solve certain puzzles as well as being used to pass certain fiery areas, freezing the floor of certain electrical pools of water and finally being used to freeze busted pipes that are pumping out steam which would hurt you. It's all very obvious stuff but thankfully none of it outstays its welcome. Why? Because the game is completable in about 3 to 4 hours. Yep, Guilt is not a long game at all and after you've played it for about half an hour to an hour, you would have sadly experienced probably 80% of what this game has to offer. The only difference is the occasional different enemy and I'm literally only talking about one or two extra by this point in the game. And besides the odd location change, don't expect much of a change up in the gameplay style at all. But again, the game's only 3 to 4 hours long, in total, so none of the repetitiveness outstays its welcome. If you're thinking Alan Wake with a Coraline paint job and a little bit of very basic Metal Gear Solid-esque stealth gameplay, then you're pretty much right on the money. The only difference is, the game is not only a lot shorter than those games, but also incredibly easy. On my second playthrough of the game, I finished it in just over 3 hours and I didn't lose one single life. And guys, I'm not a pro gamer or anything, far from it. The game is quite literally that easy. As soon as you realise that the enemies are easy to defeat and that the game is over giving in its battery recharge packs for your light beam and health pickups, which are inhalers by the way, it's very hard not just to run into every room instead of creep around, which is 100% what this game wants you to do. By this point, you're probably thinking I'm hating on the game, but I'm not. It was perfectly enjoyable, and even on my second playthrough, it didn't ever get boring. It was a horror game that surprisingly was quite a nice, relaxing game to play. The ending was pretty good as it makes you choose between two very different outcomes and like I said a third that I'm yet to see, however the final boss as awesome as it was, was probably one of the easiest final bosses I've ever gone up against and it was over in a matter of minutes, which was one of the biggest letdowns in the game. I don't give review scores on this channel but if I was going to give Guilt a score out of 10, I don't know, let's give it a solid 7. If the game looks up your street, it probably will be. However, besides that final boss, which was a letdown, the biggest problem that it has is that it's Stadia's only exclusive. Again, perhaps I'm a bit retro, but when a new system comes out, in my opinion, it's all about the exclusives. And if you think the same as me, then you'll understand me when I say that this game has a stupidly unfair amount of weight on its shoulders. This is not a system seller. This is a slightly cheaper budget title that you'd get with a system seller, which sadly Stadia doesn't have. For instance, on day one of my Switch, I bought myself Breath of the Wild, but I also bought Bomberman R. On the launch of the Dreamcast, I got Sonic Adventure, but I also got Trick Style. You see what I mean? Heck, if somehow in the future this game joins Game Pass or is part of your PlayStation Plus free monthly games, you'll have a perfectly adequate amount of fun with it. I do suggest you play this game, but you would never buy a console just to play it, especially considering it was £30 and <laughs> no offence to the people that made it, this game is not worth £30 in this day and age. 15 yes, 20 uh, that's pushing it slightly, but £30? <laughs> oh no. But this is all we've got on Stadia right now. Everything else on the platform, and I do mean everything, can be found on other systems, and for the most part, they're all more expensive here too. Sure, you get discounts if you spend a tenner a month, which, yes, does come with a couple of free games, but I do not see the appeal here. I've spent maybe 10 to 15 hours playing my Stadia and during my first playthrough that was maybe 4 hours, possibly slightly longer, I had in total about 15 to 20 minutes where the game became very glitchy and practically was unplayable. On top of this, there was two instances where the controller would just suddenly stop for a couple of seconds and my character would continue walking in whatever direction I was holding before it stopped working and there was another instance where the game completely crashed was this the game itself? Was this Stadia? Who knows? All I know is that I couldn't open the pause menu or anything. I literally had to close down the browser and reopen it. But on my second playthrough, which was being streamed for just over three hours, was during a more peak time, and at the same time I was on a Discord call with my Patreons, I did not notice any issues whatsoever. 
there was no latency issues, there was no input lag that I noticed, there was absolutely no issues with playing this game at all. And every so often I had to remind myself, wow, all of this is being played in a Chrome browser and you've got to admit, that is damn impressive. For generations, people have been saying that a video game version of Netflix where there is no consoles anymore is the future. And although I've scoffed at the thought of this, after I purchased the game from the Stadia store on my phone, went to Stadia.com, plugged in my controller within a few seconds, I saw the game that I just purchased being played in a Chrome browser. And I gotta say guys, I was shocked and very impressed. Now, obviously, like I said, I had a few issues initially, and to be fair, Guilt isn't exactly the game that would demonstrate pinpoint latency or button input timing. And when looking at the store, I think playing games like the Tomb Raider games or even Red Dead Redemption would actually play quite nicely on here. And considering my last video on Stadia, which I don't think even had one positive comment left on it, when the hundreds of people watched me stream Guilt in its entirety completely flawlessly, the chat soon started to shift towards a more positive mindset for Stadia. Heck, I may have even changed a few people's opinions and they may have gone out and bought the thing. <laughs> well, that was until I booted up Samurai Showdown. Yeah, look, I am seeing issues here. No, you yeah. I would say that was jump back. For a game yeah. like this. And here we are guys, I honestly didn't notice any input lag at all, but I'm sure you will all agree, a game like this cannot be played like this. Granted, this is the second time I'm playing this game, and the first time I played it, which I didn't record, was perfect from what I could tell, and well, there you go. With that, I think it's probably a good time to round all of this up, yeah? Google Stadia, it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever, ever had to review. If I review a new Switch game or a PlayStation 4 or Xbox game or even a PC game, all you guys that buy it will get the exact same experience as me. That's not the case with Google Stadia. The reason you're hearing a lot of negativity about it is because the experience is so very different depending on who is reviewing the system. And all I can do is tell you my experience. To answer my earlier question, who's it for? Well, it's definitely not for me. Guilt was a perfectly fine game, and even though it was a console exclusive, it wasn't a console seller. For someone like me, Stadia doesn't have a console seller yet, and they haven't even announced one for the future. And for all of the people not like me that buy systems for games such as Destiny 2 and Samurai Showdown, I can't honestly recommend it to you either. The issues that I've had are honestly few and far between, but yes, they do exist. I have an above average fiber broadband line, 80 up, 10 down, and even I noticed that, you know, maybe 5% of the time, the game was having issues that pro one-on-one -on -one fighters or first person fans would really get wound up with. But, you know, then again, why would you even consider a service like this when you can just buy those games on another system and probably cheaper? Which only leaves the casual market. Not only do you not really have that many casual games, but considering I did notice a few issues on my above average broadband line, my guess is that you guys will experience a fair few more issues if you pay for a more standard UK average broadband connection. And that's everyone, right? Look. Honestly, I did see the future with Stadia and it very much blew me away. Google has convinced me that we may now see a future where playing games via Wi-Fi is possibly going to become a standard. I tip my hat to Google for being able to pull this off and, you know, like I say, for sending me this review copy. Everyone out there that is comparing this to OnLive or, you know, the Ouya, you are so, so wrong. This is incredibly impressive, and although we have moved forward with this, I don't know what to call it, games as a service model, definitely further than we've ever done before, it is still the future of gaming. And it's a future that we are still a fair way off. Do I see myself continuing my pro subscription in February of 2020? 
sadly not. I see myself basically paying for a month when a new exclusive comes out. And well, like I said, there's not even any on the horizon yet. And sadly, by the time that they do come out, I think everyone would have moved on from Google Stadia. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. Before I get over to my Patreons and everyone else, I just want to thank you all for watching this, uh, this well, my third video on Google Stadia now, and I can assure you all that this is definitely the last. I'm working on a pretty big complete history. I don't know if it's going to be coming next week or within two weeks roughly, but it's coming. It's based on an N64 game, a very popular N64 game by a company called Rare. Have I said too much? Have I said too much? Well, you will all have to see very soon. I'm working on some kick scammers as well. Obviously, I always am. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Obviously, thank you to Google uh, themselves for sending over to Stadia. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, this now in my drawer and I doubt I'm going to be taking it out anytime soon unless someone comes over that wants to see it. Uh, but yeah, I think it was uh, an interesting um, interesting thing to talk about. But So again, yeah, thank you very much all for watching and thank you Google for sending it over. And uh, guys, if you want me to review some more proper retro inspired games or, you know, other retro games, all that sort of stuff, which is, you know, what I'm better at, let's be honest, then, you know, please check the videos that you're seeing on the screen. And if any of these particular games look of interest to you use the play asia link below and you know you can even use that and go and buy something else if you do that it really 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 does help the show uh, get future things to review for you guys but anyway yes let's give a massive shout out to those patreons that help me out every single month with an extra big shout out going to gary pinkett mantis that retro video gamer ryan burford andrew dalton ben jackson jonathan hayward kevin king christopher turnbull phil lowlands roven army ryan Holtz, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina Robertson Dunn, Adam Lefty Taylor, Intrigued Gaming, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, R Conrad Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephants, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, King Link Reviews. Um, I've been seeing your comments on my <laughs> monkey ball video. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Jim Knapp, Shadow Dial, Game Apologist, Chris Applin, Wobbles and Bean, The One. Under Ducks, Ye Old Hamburger, Dan Petit, Lucas Softel, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solix Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kingy Mo Cut, Tyndall, The Geeky Dad, aka the uh, Dizzy Fan Number One, and Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Dizzy Fan Number Two. Then you've got Tupul Float G, and then you've got Hardcore Fan. Petty Mew. If you guys want to get your name shouted out like this, get your name shown, come and see what I'm working on, be part of my exclusive rooms in my Discord channel, uh, see all of the ramblings I, you know, chuck out over on Patreon and every every other perk that, you know, too many to mention, of course. Then click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. But for now, this is DJ Slope signing out from Google Stadia, probably for good, and this video... And then hopefully I'll see you all next time.